Did you guys know that the type of art you make actually shows what type of person you are? Like sometimes the things you be drawing are actually the polar opposite of what you are in real life. Let me explain. Number one, your OCs. If your art is full of your drawings of your OCs, then you probably have no friends. That's the reason why you keep creating fictional characters and hyper fixating on them. Because you don't have any friends in real life. So since you don't have any friends, you just make them up. You're a silly little schizo. Real talk though, I didn't have any friends when I was a kid, so I made a lot of OCs. And yes, they were all edgy, but that's besides the point. What I've noticed about people making OCs is a lot of people are literally just trauma dumping on their OCs. Like instead of going to therapy like a normal sane person, they just make their OCs go through the most horrendous stuff. So if you're noticing a pattern in your OCs, you probably need to seek help. Next, fan art. If you draw fan art, on the other hand, you are attention deprived. Fan art always gets more likes, okay? Simply because nobody cares about your stupid OCs. Now a lot of people say that drawing fan art is not creative because you're not doing something original, but I beg to differ because with the amount of weird sussy stuff I see on my FYP every day, I do not doubt their creativity. The amount of thirsty fan art I see of anime characters, I'm talking about the JJK fandom, okay? Holy crap, you guys. Like, some of the fan art makes me want to wash my eyes with some holy water. Anyway, a lot of people who draw fan art either just really love and hyper fixate on the characters they draw. For example, maybe Gojo is their comfort character and they're thirsty for him, or they just draw them for attention, for the clout. You know, clout chasers unite. Oh. Ooh la la. Oh, I mean, Aloha. That's our sponsor for today, by the way. Aloha Comics. They publish all kinds of juicy comics. Listen, I know you guys love reading manhwas, so you may want to check out the stuff that they're about to publish. First is Link Click. Basically, it's about two fruity boys who travel back in time. It may interest you if you're into thriller or suspense. Here you are. Damn. If you love BLs about school life, definitely try this one. Day Off It's a BL too, but it's giving office romance. Lastly, Nirvana in fire. It's a historical bromance with action. Now, if any of these books interest you, you can check out Manoa Golden Collection. It's a new Kickstarter project by Aloha Comics. Let's just say they know their target audience, am I right? Now, Aloha Comics basically makes an official English translation of your favorite titles, but they need your help to fund their project. And if you guys support them on Kickstarter, not only do you get the books, but you also get exclusive bonuses, including an exclusive single named something important. So if y'all are interested, please support Manoa Golden Collection on Kickstarter. Go ahead and click the link in the description below. Moving on. Next, ship art. No, I am not talking about ships. I'm talking about characters that you ship. It's still a bit related to fan art, but it's the thirsty edition. If you draw a lot of ship art, you have a lot of pent-up frustration. You seriously need to get laid. Now, there's two types of ship art. Number one is the innocent cute type. For example, two characters holding hands or an innocent kiss. Or like, you create a short little comic about the characters that you ship. That is completely okay. I love those types of art. I literally kept seeing Lloyd X Your Forger ship art on my TL back in quarantine. That was peak art, man. It's the equivalent of seeing a cute couple on TikTok doing cute couple stuff. Like, it's so wholesome. But at the same time, it makes me want to sleep on the railroad tracks. Because I know I'll never experience that in real life. Now, anyway, these types of artists who draw innocent, cute, romantic types of ship art, you guys are most likely touched deprived, you yearn for romantic connections and you don't get it because nobody likes you. So instead, you just use your artistic skills to cope. Number two is the thirsty type of ship art. This is the more disturbing version. Guys, I have seen so many ships that do not make sense because what the heck is pregnant Sonic, man? Y'all are always shipping random characters with each other. It's not even funny. I can't even tell if it's a joke or not. Honestly, guys, when I see art like that, I immediately assume that the person is like nine years old, loves Shrek and love saying skibbity toilet ohio riz next meme art ah yes meme art meme art is either a masterpiece or just straight up cringe a lot of people will draw fictional characters as memes and a lot of the times it's cringe or or maybe they draw silly little animals like this one these ones they're straight up masterpieces okay one thing is for certain though people who draw meme art you do it for the likes there's no avoiding it because not only is it low effort a lot of people relate to it and also it does huge numbers on IG Reels, which is so worth it. TikTok. Ah yes, the TikTok art style. If you have the TikTok art style, you don't have a sense of identity. You don't have your own brain. You just follow art trends on TikTok. And it's not just art trends too. You are just really influenced by TikTok in general. For example, if there's a trending makeup product on TikTok, you're probably gonna buy it just because it went viral. Or if there's a trending hot guy on TikTok and people keep making edits of him, you're probably gonna simp on him too. You just basically copy everything you see on TikTok. If you have the TikTok art style, 
dog. You're probably chronically online. Also, you're probably 12. Go outside and play with dirt or something. Colorful. Every time I think of people who draw colorful stuff, I immediately think of the guy behind Studio Ghibli. Bro really made the most wholesome animated movies ever, but he's the most depressed guy on the planet, I swear. This guy really said anime was a mistake, except for Jojo. Jojo is alright. But like, I just remember this meme all the time. Hayao Miyazaki versus Junji Ito. People who use a lot of colors are basically just really depressed in general. They're just really good at hiding it, and it shows in their art. A lot of people are just using their art to cope. They make their paintings look happy because their life is miserable. That's okay, at least their painting slays. Edgy. On the other hand, edgy people are just basically normal people who are going through puberty. A lot of hormone changes, okay? This is coming from my own experience. If you have edgy art, you're 14 years old. And although you draw a lot of dark stuff, you're not really depressed, okay? You just want attention. And again, I went through this as well. You may like a lot of gory stuff, a lot of edgy art, a lot of blood, but trust me guys, it's just your emo phase. And honestly guys, I'm still going through this phase as well. If you have the edgelord art style, you probably don't have any friends. And also, your parents are probably strict. You're not allowed to get tattoos or piercings, but you think they're cool. And don't get me started on the lashes. You put so many freaking lashes, bro. You also copy paste this exact dragon tattoo on all your characters and add cigarettes and vapes just for fun. Overall, you're really try hard and you care a lot about what people think of you. Drawing on your phone. Guys, I have a question. Is drawing on your phone that impressive? A lot of phone artists think it's a flex that they draw on a phone. It's not a flex, okay? It just means you're broke off. What are you even flexing? The fact that you're gonna get carpal tunnel within three months of drawing on your phone? Guys, it's really not a good investment for your health. It is not worth the risk, okay? I'd rather you guys just draw on paper. At least then you'd be honest about being broke. Drawing with a phone is basically just like drawing using a mouse or drawing on MS Paint. People know it's not practical. That's why they would think it's impressive. But is that really worth nerfing your hand just for a bit of praise? If you wanted to feel superior, just get an air fryer. That's so much better for your health. So a lot of the time, phone users are beginners. Because bro, how broke do you gotta be to be using a phone to draw? Not even paper? Not even an iPad? If you draw on your phone, you're most likely using Ibis Paint to draw as well. Because again, you're broke. No hate to Ibis Paint. But Ibis Paint users just scream brokey. And all you literally draw are just just eyes because that's all you know and also maybe your gotcha OC. Okay guys, overall I think most people use their art as a coping mechanism or whatever. Art is basically like the windows to your soul, which I think is true. My haters love to say that my art is soulless ass. That's not true. I put my heart and soul into my art. It just so happens that I have no soul. Anyway, once again, thank you to Aloha Comics for sponsoring this video. Just a reminder guys that the Kickstarter is ending soon, so please support it. Anyway, watch this next one. See you there. Stay cool.